Hello everyone and welcome to the Uke Stuff YouTube channel and I am in the process of reviewing all of my ukuleles and some other ones that I find for the Uke Guide format and if you go to ukeguide.info or you go to ukestuff.info you can find the list of Uke Guides of instruments that I've reviewed and the whole idea behind this series is to make a summary statement that combines both objective and subjective parts of a review to give you the best information on an instrument if you might be considering it or looking for it and uh, to do so in a way that sort of mimics the energy use guides that come with many appliances at least here in the United States where I live. So my instrument today that I'm going to be looking at is my McAfee Islander which I have talked about and shown before. It is a plastic ukulele that we don't exactly know when it was made but somewhere between 1949 and 1969, 9 million of these were sold by McAfee, who created them out of polystyrene. And if you want to know more about this, you need to visit the webpage and YouTube channel of the friend of mine that gave me this instrument very kindly, Eukster Brown. He has a great collection of these, and is probably the world's greatest authority on these instruments. He buys them um, sometimes in a, in a bad state of repair, fixes them up um, and will give them away, sell them, um, and sometimes collect them. He's got an interesting collection. They use different colors for the plastic. This is pretty much the most standard that you would see, sort of this reddish material, this marbleized polystyrene um, with the yellow front. And there are a couple competitors too that made instruments very similar to these and a couple brands of McAfee as well. He ended up having a relationship with Arthur Godfrey, who was a television and radio personality at the time, and that also boosted the sales of these instruments. It's a Generally, it's a soprano instrument with tuning pegs. We'll talk about that a little bit later when we get to it, but I am just so very grateful for this instrument, and um, I just love having it. So let's take a look at the instrument. These are available, but you have to look for them a little bit. Uh, they will be between $50 and $230 used for kind of a clean used version. And you can find others for cheaper or on the lower part of that spectrum that need work or repair. And if you're not afraid to try to repair things, I know Eukster Brown will use like automotive glue to fix problems. Like this one, you can see at the neck, it was cracked and he's used automotive glue. And I, I'm just so thankful to have this part of history in my collection. Um, there were so many of these that were sold. So ultimately today, if you buy one, you're buying an instrument that was at no point, I think more than $5 for a baritone at a huge, huge, you know, increase of time, um, over time of that cost. So it's hard to say that these are a great value today. At the time, I think they were a steal. If I would ever have a time machine, I think I'd go back and buy hundreds of these and travel to the future and sell them now today, I think. So there's so many that were sold. Um, so compared to some of the new value, new instruments that you can buy today in pristine, brand new shape with high quality, um, either HPL laminate or even laminate woods, it's not the greatest value. That doesn't mean that it's bad. The build quality was excellent. I mean, think about it. These things are still around and it's been, you know, 60, 70, maybe even pushing 80 years for some of these instruments. That's fantastic. Fantastic. So we're approaching 80 years for the earliest ones that he made. So the the build was excellent. The design was perfect. I mean, really for a plastic ukulele and just they're fantastic. So for the build quality, really, really um, excellent. Again, risk of melting, which happened to a lot of them in California and warm places like Florida, where they were played on a beach and left in a hot car, but that's okay. The looks are good. That marbleized plastic really, um, you can see it on the fretboard as well, makes them look kind of, of neat. Uh, very plain fronts, generally. Um, if I get a little further back, you can see it. A little bit of a ring rosette around the sound hole, a bridge that has some class. It's just a simple slotted bridge, but um, they look pretty good, you know, so it's not super blinged out, but it's also not boring. They're out there. You can find them. They're available. 
but you might have to look a little bit for the one that you want. And in terms of playability, um, it it's narrow. So truly, compared to some instruments that are on today, um, it's not as playable as some other current models. Uh, the, the zero fret here, but if you take a look here, has a zero fret, so it has a nut that keeps things organized, and then a zero fret that maintains intonation, very much like the um, like the Panda watercolor that I just reviewed has that um, zero fret as well. So the zero fret guarantees good intonation as you go, whereas the nut just keeps the strings in their places, and it's playable but it's not a huge amount of space so it's a little less playable than some wider ukuleles so it, it not bad for playability but again there are some instruments that are just a little bit more playable now the sound for a completely plastic ukulele this is not a hybrid um, plastic body wood top or anything this is all polystyrene all the way through it sounds pretty decent i think So it sounds pretty darn good for a plastic ukulele. Is this a solid wood, koaloa, kamaka, kanalea? No, it's not. This is a 1940s to 1960s plastic ukulele, and I think they sounded pretty great. They were loud and punchy. They have a bright tone, even though they've got a little bit of the temperance of the dark but if you play a waterman today when i play a waterman um it can have kind of a tubby sound it doesn't have that tubby sound of a waterman so and again that's not picking on the waterman it's just saying it's made of a different equipment or a different material and it's shaped a little differently has very much uh, inspired by the mcafairy islander so um yeah i think it has a really great sound so you're looking at a soprano ukulele 13.75 inches from the zero fret to the molded saddle that sits on the bridge. There are only 12 frets and no side position markers. The body style is a double bout, normal shape, made out of styrene plastic, back and side, soundboard, nut, saddle, bridge, all that is made out of polystyrene. It does not have a radius fretboard. It is flat. The nut and saddle, the nut is separate, The and there's a zero fret, and the saddle um, are just, again, made out of that same polystyrene plastic, and it's a non-compensated saddle. The finish is plastic, so I don't know if gloss would describe it best, because it's not a shiny gloss. Um, it almost with, with time looks a little bit um, more of like a satin finish although I'm sure I could get some rubbing compound and make it super shiny it's overall length is 21 inches and it only weighs 10.4 ounces so it's under a pound very 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 light the tuner type and this is where McAfee was a genius he understood that there were certain things that didn't work well for the instrument such as the frets not being plastic he thought you know what i need something so the frets are metal as are the friction tuners so if you take a look there you've got to get far enough away that you can see it the actual important bits of the friction tuners are made of metal the action at the first fret is 0.5 millimeters so if they could figure that out in 1949 why can't some manufacturers today figure out that that's what the first fret should be set at in terms of action. And then the action at the 12th fret is 2.75 millimeters, a touch higher than I'd like, 
but you know what it works just fine the way it is the zero fret width is 33.27 millimeters that's what i'm talking about it's it's really a constrained distance up there um, however space between the strings is 8.86 uh, millimeters for 30.85 g to a so again really narrow up here but it doesn't really impact the uh, the spacing so much from other sopranos and the neck is kind of a c-shape which i think a lot of the chinese manufacturers have molded theirs after even something like a martin um has a similar shape so it's all kind of a c-shape not overly flat maybe a little flatter than usual but at the third fret it's 21.81 millimeters at that now the last thing i wanted to say before i finish this review and talking about this ukulele which i think is fantastic is also just take a look now this is the martin s1 this is a more modern martin s1 but it is, I think, what inspired McAfee as well. So you cannot look at the McAfee crown and not see the Martin crown. You can't look at the instrument and not see that there were parts of it that were molded off of uh, Martin's original uh, style. But that's okay. It makes it. It doesn't mean that if you copy a, a similar shape that you can't also make a great ukulele and think about the millions of people that started playing ukulele and fell in love with making music on their own because of this instrument so let's talk about this instrument in terms of a uke guide score and i give a score between zero and five ukuleles i think that if you can get a hold of one of these today and it's in good playing shape I think this one is a solid four. It's not perfect. Um, it's it's certainly um, subject not to the damp. For example, like an outdoor ukulele is much more um, weatherproof and condition proof. And um, this action, or you know, if you could go back in time and say, "Hey, Macberry, could you make?" you know this not a little bit wider here so that it was a little more playable um that would be a very very nice but again really it's an amazing uh piece of history that's still playable and um, i just i just love having this in my collection so if you see one of these for sale somewhere inexpensively even if it needs some repairs uh definitely consider getting one because they're a lot of fun and again thanks to my friend eukster brown for letting me have this one and i will cherish it all of my days, and I mean that. So thanks for watching, and we will catch you next time.